and in it is we will come and just see what we are looking for. We are at the topic of current sources and sinks and uh, we have said that in a CMOS analog IC, a current source or sink acts like a basic building block and there are three major requirements come from them. One of them is that the output impedance should be very, very high, as high as possible. Also we must guarantee that all devices are in saturation and also finally the mirror should satisfy another limit which is essentially because the boot source should have V minimum minimum that is drop across current source should be as small as possible. So based on these requirements uh, we already looked into a simple current mirror okay, and uh, we also looked into the variation in parameters uh, particularly we looked into beta, vt and lambda. Generally lambda parameter variations are very small so they need not be taken every time but for the completeness we did take that and based on that we realize that if I want to reduce the percentage error between the mirror sources source and the output source output current then I must somehow manage uh, variations as small as possible but there are two terms one positive one negative so try to compensate them okay. is that point clear what I said. So here is that word what I am saying the expression which we have derived or oh, there is something uh, that day maybe I made mistake but you can check it yourself again. Uh, I have a feeling that I think instead of 2 below the denominator in my expression it is in 2 in numerator. So this this 2 should have something like that some error is do not look this expression look of course there is a power to the power 4 leaving all higher order terms this is what typically you will get and I said you that these are the two terms which are essentially governed by delta Vt by Vt and there is a term which is delta B dash by B dash. So if I want to make this as small as possible these two terms must be very close to this term is that clear. So if that happens probably you will so you can adjust your lengths widths you can also adjust VGS you can adjust VT if possible and then you can minimize the effect of variations. So there is in case you need a very strong source with no variations one possibility that we can play with the parameters so that that can be minimized. Of course 4 percent error is normally acceptable in most cases but in case it is lower than that you require then you must somehow uh, try to see whether we can minimize that. Delta f is a function any of them vt or alpha or beta or lambda or whatever it is okay. If any of the variation is 5 percent then we find typically this is 4 percent error appears is that okay. You can see this is getting subtracted so it will be less than major error which is coming okay. Okay so this is what we did last time so today we start with as I say one of the features of good current source or mirror it should have high impedance and it should have low V win okay these are the two major features I want to attain and for this I will start looking into alternative to simple mirrors and here is the first alternative we anyway know very well that uh, if you use a cascode what do you improve the output resistance. So the one of the feature of a current source was you need a output resistance higher so use a cascode part there so automatically R may actually go high R out should go high. Uh, we are also looking for minimization of this so we see that how much V min we get V min means at the output what is V min you are actually going to get somewhere here. And we will figure it out how much is the actually minimum drop across the source which is allowed. So for example I have said a typical for a 5 micron process which is given in by, uh, Baker's book uh, so VTN of 0.83 volt over voltage of 0.37 volt that gives VGS of 1.2 volt okay. Please remember V is VGS minus VT if VT is 0.83 and if this is 0.37 VGS has to be 1.2 volt. Now 
we want to figure out what is the minimum drop across the current source for this data, some numbers since we are going to calculate, I thought I should put the numbers. This is taken from Boyce Baker Lee's work data, so please check the numbers if, if there is something mischief I made, hopefully not. So I am trying to now use a cascode mirror in which I have two stages, you can see from here, M3, M4 forms a pseudo mirrors and uh, M1, M2 also form a mirror kind of structure and one is sitting over the other. But if you look at M2 and M4 and if this potential for AC is 0, this acts like a cascode to that series gate, gate connected to the driver, is that clear? So we are trying to see that because of M4 sitting over M2, at this point the output resistance should be gm times gain plus into ro okay so that little more but that is the typical value so if if i can get that value then i have improved my current source requirement r out should be higher that's possibility exist now we can see from here the way it is done uh, this is a current source which we will actually put it through some p channel device ladder which is called the bias current, which is our reference current. Since this potential D3 and S3, VDS3, you know, since I am connecting something like this, the gate of this VGS and this VGS is same. Since I am connecting something like this, this VGS and this VGS are also same. Is that okay? However, please remember some fun part in that this VGS has something to do with drop from here. The source is not now at ground potential for this, source is at drop VDS across this. So VGS may be same, but the source is not at ground, this has to be understood. So the gate voltage is not exactly at the ground for the upper ones, uh, sorry this potential and it is plus something is adding up, but net value of VGS has to be same if the currents are to be same. Okay. So this idea that what will these two do and what will these two do can be figured out from an example given to you. This is still a good current source, there is nothing much you can do analysis, but what is interesting to me is the, so these G's are only written to prove what, where, which is gate for one and drain for one. For example, the source of M3 is drain of M1, source of M4 is drain of M2 and we are interested in this voltage at the end. Why we are interested in D4? Because that is the VO minimum. So we want to know what is that minimum. Okay. In most cases, the source uh, the body is grounded and not connected to source. Okay. They are generally grounded. Okay. But there are technologies in which it is connected as well. Okay. So different than VSB's effects could be taken care in case this is not connected directly, but to a ground. If it is a ground, that means there is a potential there and some VT will move. So that part will be there. But right now I am not considering VSB effect, but they can always be brought in into the expressions. Maybe I will give an example when I brought that actually. Is that okay? So let us see, first thing I am worried about is the V minimum part because R out I by intuition I know because I have put a cast code, I am going to get it higher. But I want to know what is the, of course I may calculate that as well, but first let us see what is the V minimum. Let us say for the values given by this bias book, VGS is 1.2. Let us say there are two batteries, one is biasing this and one is biasing this. Uh, we could say there that VGG1, which is same as VGG2, this is coming from the mirror side. Please remember this value is coming from the actual reference side. So it is equally saying there is a bias to M2. Please remember VGS2 is same as VGS1, okay. So I am just writing directly there. So VGG1 is VGG2, which is 1.2 volt because VGS has been given to me 1.2 volt. Similarly, VGS, VGG3 is equal to VGG4 from the other side. I, please remember all that I am doing this and this, this and this, okay. So this is equivalently saying the supply coming here, so which is 1.2 here plus 1.2 here for that VGS, so it is 2.4 there. 
So, for M4 to be in saturation, what is the condition M4 will be always in saturation? The VDS4 of M4 should be larger than VGS minus VT for M4. Is that correct? That is the condition which it should satisfy if M4 to remain in saturation. Now, we also know VD2 which is equal to the VS4 that is the source of M4 is same as VD2. If M2 is to saturate the VDS2 or VD2 of this should be larger than VGS minus VT of this, two, two transistors should remain in saturation so that the output resistance will act like a cast code structure and you will have mirror transmission in any way otherwise because this will be same as the other side current. So, if these are the two conditions and if we keep VDS2 and that is the condition we want to force, what is the minimum VDS2 I should have? Okay. If this VG, VDS2 is same as VGS2, so VGS2 minus VT will be always smaller than VDS2. So, transistor will always remain in saturation if this voltage is same as this voltage. That is the minimum value of VD2 which allow transistor to saturate is this equal to this. If they are equal then transistor M2 will always remain in saturation. Is that correct? VGS minus VT will be always smaller than VDS. This value is going to vary with the difference of currents which I will pass through that. This is a function of someone yesterday was asking, so I am proving it. Yeah, that may vary, but at, up, to, up to which I will allow it to vary. The ma minimum value which I should allow is VGS minus VT should be smaller than VDS will only occur when VGS is same as VT. Is that correct? So, if that min I am calculating what is the minimum, I am not saying at POV, I am calculating what is the minimum possible available to me. So, if M2 remains saturation with VDS2 equal to VGS2. So, VDS2 is VGG1 equal to VG2 is 1.2. So, if I keep it 1.2 volt, I am guaranteeing M2 will always remain in saturation. I am actually interested to know what is this value. Just a minute because I want to see that upper value also should saturate the upper one. So, I am trying to see both together how much I will saturate. Okay. Is that okay? For M4 to be saturation, VD4 minus VD2 should be greater than VGG4 minus VD2 minus VT. That is VGS, which is VD, VGG4 minus VD2 is VGS minus VT, and this is VD4 minus VD2 is VDS for this. This condition gives me it should be 2.4 minus 0.83, substitute the values. So, around 1.57, so it is 2 VOV plus VT. Now, this value has now come that unless I have a VOV which is uh, equal to 2 VOV VT, I cannot ensure you now both trans individually VOV is sufficient, but together in series I must attain this value so that the output of what which I am now calculating both transistors remain in saturation. So, that the minimum I am now getting is 2 VOV plus VT where it will definitely get otherwise you should have to further increase if you want 100 percent guarantee on it. But what is the since VOV is 0.37 as you said, so 0 0.37 into 2 is 0.74 plus 0.83. So, it is roughly 1.57 volt which is required at the output. Is that correct? As the minimum V min. So, that means it is not really doing fantastic job because till 1.57 volt, it is not acting like a good current source. That is the limit of this. But what is the advantage I got it? This I have achieved it, okay. I have figured out that, okay. What is the value I would prefer? It should be independent of VOV in such. Why should I feel it should be independent of VOV? Because if it is only VT dependent, then I am controlling it. Okay. So, I would like to have a current source which is only strongly dependent on video and nothing, nothing else, no W by anything. If I get that value, I am happy. So, I am trying to reach towards that. But if I use CAS code, I have a larger VD4 requirements I am coming to keep M2, M4 in saturation. Now, this is an issue which has to be tackled because what is a good current source? In some cases, maybe they, you have sufficient voltage margin, so you can still go ahead and work with it. Okay, but in other cases, this may not be accepted. You will actually prefer point some point eight or point seven volt as the V min for you. Now, these calculations are all this to do how much minimum really I can 
achieve for you. Okay, is that okay? Now I can do without going into details, but as we have already done it, we can do for RO calculation by putting GMVA4 this, RO4 parallel, GMVGS2, both are in, as you said, you are in saturation. So these are equivalent circuit. I apply VX source, pass a IX current. Why VGS2 is 0, I said? Because the source is coming from reference and that I must actually create it to 0, no current in the reference, all sources, current sources be opened and voltage sources be shorted. So the other side of circuit is not necessary because there I am forcing VGS2 to go to 0. Now if I do this, you can see GM VGS2 also will go away. So if I calculate this value, GM VGS4 multiplied by parallel combination this, so R out will come, which we did earlier is GM4 RO2 RO4 which is essentially gain times the uh, RO, if ROs are equal then you can say GM RO square, is that correct? What is the output resistance of a cascode? GM RO square. So we will ach achieve higher output resistance by simply cascoding. At what cost I did this? I, I had to have 1.57 V min for this current source to operate as a good current source. Is that clear? So the conditions which I thought we can achieve by just cascoding was not sufficient. Is that point clear, Pratik, Parik? I have improved RO, but I also saw it has improved, increased the V min, which I, I, as I said, my first characteristics, ideally I want V min to be close to 0 or very sharp rise, very small V min, then it is a good current source. I am trying to reach that. So why are we looking into this? To reach there, we will one by one go step ahead. So I say, okay, first we went for simple, then we say, okay, let us cascode. So I brought R out, out, higher. I now want to keep this output stage similar because I do not want to reduce my RO. If possible, I may want to increase it further, but I want to now reduce V min. So what should I do so that I can reduce V mins? Now what we do is we can reduce the V-min by very funny uh, circuit is done. This is called magic battery solution. This solution is named as magic battery solution. Okay. The rest part is similar except that please do not worry too much, circuit is same as what it was, except that between the gates of M3 and M4, I have applied a small battery of PT. And that is why it was called, of course there are number of variations on this, I am giving you the simplest of them. There are four such circuit which can do similar things, okay, one of them maybe we will see. So what is now happening is, we have this 2 VOB by VT which we are getting minus VOB VT because this additional VT we are supplying now which will get subtracted. So now you are getting VOV as your V min. So you have reduced from 2 VOV in plus VT to only VOV, okay, which is what you said smaller. So I putting a battery to compensate, I will be able to reduce my V min, but no cost at output because I cascode stage is not changed by me. Is that correct? Now maybe uh, you look into the book, there are a variety of, uh, of course this name is not given by uh, Baker, but this is an interesting name I read somewhere is called magic battery solutions. Okay. How to create this VT is what the solutions are, different way you can create VTs and then you can see that you can compensate for, please remember this is opposite sign that is why it is deducting actually. This technique of readjusting the V minimum by adjusting additional batteries, you can have multiple, there are multiple systems. So maybe you look into book, this is just to give an idea how V min can further be reduced. Normally batteries are not put like this, so some other method will use to put V minimum V VT there, equivalent source, okay, equivalent reference. So I need a voltage reference there. So now we must look for voltage reference because I, I need that somewhere here to get it. Okay. But as far as theory is concerned, if I can put some value there, I can minimize this value. Is that okay? Yes. If you change the VGS, Okay, correspondingly this voltage plus this voltage, this 
2 V O V minus this if you subtract then the V D S will be this to this will be this. Try yourself substitute the values ok. For every node ok the method I suggest you every node you calculate voltages and find voltage here and find voltage there. V D S of M2 but that additional that will be same VDS because that that I cannot minimize because that will decide by my current which I will push. But at least here it was VOV plus VT that VT I have actually cancelled. Your point is well sorry I think you are also right. This value which I have reduced here it was VOV plus VT that I have actually reduced by 1 VT by putting a battery is that correct. So overall 1 VT reduction I have done. This is just you can see 1 Vt only I am reducing out of it. That Vgs I have subtracted 1 Vt. I can readjust this value to some further reductions, but the problem is if I reduce this too much, this transistor may not remain in saturation. So, how much Vt to adjust or how much battery to adjust is forced by me M2 to remain in saturation. So, this is what I thought that this is good enough and that is the minimum I should start with. Okay. So, at least 1 Vt V minimum I have gone down ok. Is that ok? Sorry I, I should not have said this, this is not you know, this is what you have said is correct. This is at Vds2 is the value which I got ok. Ok, we are very good. The another thing which is worrying me on any current source and current mirrors is something which is uh, you know in real life no parameter remains constant is that we have seen variability issue. So, how do you monitor variability? What is the method of finding variability? So, one method is called sensitivity analysis. Is that clear? What is sensitivity? Here is a definition of sensitivity. I want to find variation of y with reference to variation in x. Is that ok? I want to find sensitivity of y with reference to variation in x. So, it is defined as limit of x to 0 delta y by y upon delta x by x. This is the definition of sensitivity of y ok. If this is my sensitivity for more details please read Boyce and Baker's book. If I have missed something you actually look for other circuits there ok. Because you know I do not want to spend all of my time in only current sources. I have limited time so I only showed you the method what they are trying and that is what we are looking for. So, let us look for the sensitivity of current source with respect to which parameter is the first parameter I should look into the power supply because power supply is never a constant quantity. It is externally connected from the pad and that can vary because of variety of reasons. Particularly in OPAM we actually look for that variation in what term we call their power supply rejection ratio if there is a variation in VDD what happens. Here there is no PSR but we, PSRR but we just want to know what is it. Let us say for a simple mirror I calculate my sensitivity ok. Since IDS1 is equal to IDS2 if W by L are equal then I0 is IDS2 which is equal to IDS1 ok. But how much is IDS1 we have calculated VD minus VSS minus VGS, please remember where drop across this plus drop across this plus VSS is essentially net VDD, is that correct? IR plus VGS plus VSS is VDD, ok. So, I can evaluate IDS1 from that VDD minus VSS, of course, this is minus of minus, so it will add minus VGS upon R. Now, we want to find the sensitivity of I0 because that is my output with reference to variation in power supply voltage. So, I define it is limit of VDD tends to 0 very small value delta I0 by I0 delta VDD sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry I made a mistake everywhere please check it you are very good ok. So, this if I rewrite this, this is equal to VDD by I0 partial derivative of I0 to VDD. So, it is this is my SI0 VDD is VDD by I0 delta I0 by VDD. But if I see delta I0 by VDD from this term which is delta IDS1 by delta VDD, if I differentiate this equation of IDS1, 
I get 1 upon R, is that correct? So, if I get 1 upon R, because these are constant, so I leave them. Delta I0 by I0, if you look at it, I substitute some values, but okay, first let us look at this. This is VD0 by I0 R and the exp value which I last time used value is the R is 380K for a 5 fold supply. 5 fold means 2.5 VDD and 2 minus 2.5 VHS is net 5. Is that clear? 2.5 VDD and minus 2.5 VHS. So, some total is, but v, here only VDD I am looking, VHS I am still keeping constant. Okay. So, 2.5 upon 10 to the power minus 5 into 380, I0 is let us say 10 microamp current. Assumption is I0 in our case example is 10 microamp current, that is what we solve the problem. So, this is what it is. So, this gives me a sensitivity of 0.66. If I want to know the change in current of I0, then 0 0.66, 0 0.2, 0 0.2.5, which means if VDD has change of 0 0.1 volt plus minus 0 0.1 volt, this is the kind of percentage variations you can get in I0. Is that clear? So, this is the sensitivity what I0 will change if VDD changes, is that correct? This is essentially why we are looking this, because we constantly say I want constant current source, okay. Now, this constant word is how, how much constant, okay. So, what should be the idea here, whether the sensitivity should be larger or smaller? as small as possible because I do not want current to change with change in VDD or very small change in I0 with reference to large change in VDD. If that happens, I say I have closer to my constant CF current, okay, at least from the power supply side. Okay. If that influences directly, I change 1 percent, I get 1 percent, 10 percent, so then I have a worry. So, at least it should not be, it is less than 1 anyway. So, at least you have improved a bit by this kind of uh, sourcing you did. Okay. So, this is one parameter which is the other parameter we should worry about in variations, one is power supply value. What else? When the circuit is working somewhere, what is it changes? Because current is flowing temperature. So, the next worry is temperature variation. Okay. Is that okay, Surbhi? The first is power supply voltage variation, the other is temperature variation and temperature variation is many times much stronger in fact, okay. Because device is normally operate from where to where in many operations as much as minus 25 to 150 or 125, okay or minus 40 to some 105 degrees. This is mil standard, military standards. So, device may even in ambience may vary in its own temperatures or device during working I square R loss will keep heating the device any unless you dissipate it properly. So, the temperature variation is a crucial fact for us to figure out whether I0 will change at different temperature. What do we expect? Should not change, that is what I ideally will like. The temperature variation sensitivity is expressed as temperature coefficient, is defined as temperature coefficient, okay. Sometimes they write like this, so maybe I will write like this, okay. T C is capital, F is subscript, so T C F temperature coefficient of I0 is defined as 1 upon I0 delta I0 by delta T, okay. This is how temperature coefficient of I0 will be defined. We already have written sensitivity of I0 to temperature, if we can find out, so it will be, okay, I say mistake again. Uh, limit of delta t tends to 0, delta i 0 by i 0 delta t by t, i t by i 0 delta i 0 by t. So, you can see from here, there is a relationship between sensitivity and TCF. Is that clear? This part 1 upon i 0 delta i 0 by d t is nothing but TCF of i 0. Please look at it, TCF of I0 is 1 upon I0 di0 by dt. In differentiation this, I get 1 upon I0 di by 0 multiplied to t. So, t times the temperature coefficient, okay, if I put f of I0 is sensitivity. So, if you have been given sensitivity and temperature of operation, I am actually specifying temperature coefficients. Is that clear? 
is that clear or vice versa. So, again same thing data is given in some cases in S form, some cases in TCF form, but both are anyway interrelated. Okay, let us calculate TCF. What is I0 as just we wrote? Will be, is it okay? So far so good. I0 is IDS1 which is VDD minus VGS minus VSS by R for the simple mirror. I differentiate. So, it is delta IDS1 by delta T and I differentiate this term with reference to temperature. Now, which are the terms which are functions of temperature? We assume VDD and VSS do not change with temperature. Okay. This is also not very valid statement every time, but assume it right now. But mostly I yeah, can assume that. But which is the strongest function of uh, this temperature? The resistance which has a direct uh, change in resistance occurs with the temperature. But Vg also changes because Vgs has something to do with Vts okay, which we have Vov plus Vt. So, obviously I must look for Vgs variation with temperature and I must look for resistance variation with temperature. So, I differentiate this two terms. So, 1 upon R d Vgs by dt plus 1 upon R d Vgs dr by dt. If I do this then I get R to the 1 upon minus 1 or oh, minus 2 ho jayega. Thikhe. You are right. Differentiate kya na? Okay. So, I then substitute this 1 upon I0 Tc I0 and if I whatever just uh, verify properly 1 upon dv by dt minus this dr. Okay, so, I now substitute Vgs. Is that correct? What is Vgs? Vgs is equal to Vt under root 2 beta i okay, or sorry i by beta. If I do that then I can actually look for this expression. Similarly, this just check you know maybe I as I say in adding I might have done some issue, but just check it well. So, basically what is TC or TCF if we keep calculating the same name now everywhere. If you substitute for those values of simple mirror 380k and 1.2 volt VGS VT or 0.83 volts, we can substitute those value and we figure it out this is 0 0.17 percent per degree centigrade typical. But normally all TCs are expressed in what numbers? Not in number, they, they always express in part per million, okay, 1 in 10 to the power 6, that is the uh, unit they normally use. So, if, it, if you convert this into part per million, it is 1700 part per million per degree centigrade is the temperature coefficient of I0. By the way, 1700 is not a large value compared to other value which may be 3000 or sometime 2400. So, this value is not largest among the values which I will use in my analysis. Resistance, in fact, you calculate is typically around 3000 for the actual resistance I make in chip. Okay. So, it is largest variation come from resistance. Further, this comes from Vt variations. Okay, so, we will see how much variation temperature dependent each has, how much ppm they have. Okay. But this is to give an idea, typically the source currents are 1000 to 1000, uh, 1500 to 2000 ppm per degree centigrade rise is always seen with the temperature. So, now you think of it, if I increase it by some amount of temperature, the current will correspondingly change proportionately. And are you really accepting that much change? If that is acceptable to you for your device uh, circuit further, no problems. If you do not want that, then think of it to adjust these values. What should I do? You can see if, if I can somehow these two terms equal plus and minus, I can bring down that value. Okay. That means I design it something. But to design this, if I change my W bar or VGS or anything or VT, then what will I change? whether that M2, M4 will remain in saturation, I am not guaranteed. So, I must first go and look verify every time there, okay. because my R0 guarantee, I, am, I must ensure that R0 is higher. So, by doing this, I must see that my other factors are not terribly disturbed okay. and that is where the design starts. That how much TCF you can have to adjust what best RO you can get at what B minimum you can get design whichever is possible that is the source for you is that correct. But 
in simple mirror R is not very high. So, we are anyway going to do cascode of that with battery magic battery there. So, that further reductions in V min I can attain and also I have higher RO. But with that I have not done this, with that I must calculate now TCF I 0 and figure out whether it is lower or higher than 1700 for the simple mirror. If that is much higher, how much tolerance you have? Okay. Ver verify yourself, if that happens fine, otherwise go back and redesign everything. Okay. Is that issue clear to you? Parameters I am worried about is saturation of M2, M4 to get my R out higher. I want V minimum, so I will use some other circuit part to V minimum. And doing all that with that W bias I use, I figure out my TCF is too high, then I have to rechange everything. Okay. That is where the design starts, given this value, how much tolerance I have. Okay. Because designers do anything, at the end of chip, it should follow you. So, what it will give, you will have to model it back and say, oh, I did not take care of TCF, therefore, these values are gone out. Okay. So, this such a situation you must take in designs. Okay. Just for the heck of it, I just give some values for you to, val, uh, to see what are this. Typically, a resistance which is used in diffusion uh, N plus region of source drain, whatever you use in a mass transistor. If I make a resistor out of N plus region, how do I make a resistance of N plus region? Anyone? Maybe I will show you quickly. This is my N plus area. Okay. This is my junction depth in P. Okay. This is the source drain length what we call LS or LD whatever it is. And if you see it another dimension which is W. Okay. This is my W. So, the area is W into LS, thickness is XJ. So, and if the resistivity of this sigma is Q mu N plus, so I know rho which is 1 upon Q mu N, N plus, mu N is known, N plus is known, R is uh, rho that is rho L by A, T of course, rho T by A. So, I can calculate the length of the source region, do not use source as a source in the transistor as use another say for example, the resistors are made something like this, this is your transistor for example, this another N plus region is created here okay, and the resistor is built in that, that is how ICs are made, whichever component you want, you should put another region for that. What is the problem with such putting there? What is the criteria I should have? This is N plus, this is N plus, this is N plus, but this is P. Isolate. Now, how to isolate the two areas? This either put an oxide down here, which is STI, or this NPN transistor should have a gain of less than 1. Okay. Is that clear? Or put even higher doping here. Okay, so, that the gain goes down. Okay. It is called guard ring. Okay. So, put a either a guard ring or put a isolating di uh, oxides below, trench it down and separate the two areas. Okay. That is the basic requirement to make any other component. So, every component in a circuit has to be isolated from the others by either of these techniques okay. and that cost hell of money. Okay. Yes. This is a resistance na. Ek bar of semiconductor hai, length, width, and thickness. So divided by a. So I I just only length and width is given by W, which is given to us. So I have a longer L N uh, N region or this decides my resistance. Typically, even this is not done because N plus is not a constant quantity. So, it is actually given by R is equal to RS L by A, uh, sorry L by W. RS is called the sheet resistance of the N plus region which is typically maybe 10 ohm per square or 15 ohm per square or sometimes even 1 ohm per square in some areas. So, RS is known to me from technology, W is generally used as the standard widths and the lengths are only adjusted to get your sheet resistance uh, proportion to that sheet any R you want. Okay. Is that okay? This is how all resistances are made. Okay. 
which is the higher resistance if I want what should I use, which area I should use. N plus is a very low resistance because N plus is a higher dope region, so conductivity is higher. So what should I, which area I should use? P region. So actually I have another this separation and this P region, I have another P created in the P which is the dope uh, sheet resistance of my choice and then make a contact here to make a higher resistances. Is that clear? I have P region created in the P well itself okay, and make two contacts separated by length L to give my sheet resistance into L by W values. Why I said P? P will have a higher resistivity and therefore higher sheet resistance. How, how can I reduce, I increase or decrease sheet resistance other than the this? What is sheet resistance I defined? Anyone? Rho by T, thickness, I can adjust even thickness, but normally I cannot separately implant something here and separately implant. If I already doing implant, I will open a window and implant right there, okay. But the higher resistance I will have to implant anyway, okay. So for a lower resistance, the source area, the drain area, whatever n plus I am doping, same I will use it for low resistance values. I will only adjust lengths for them and widths of course standards, so I will get my resistance of that. But if I want higher, I can even do better. I can deposit, anyway I am going to have a poly here, so I can have a poly layer, okay. of course it has to be also protected by oxide and I can make a contact to poly because poly has a very high resistance relative to everyone else. Okay. Is that clear? Another mask, please remember what is the worrying technology. Everything I do individually, I will require every other area to be masked to do process there. 8 masks, 8 million dollar. Okay. So now do you really wish to do that? Because how many is money, how much money hai, wohi karoge na. So everything is not, basically how do I make capacitors in this technology? I have a MOS, na? mass capacitor sitting there, okay. but there are other capacity methods also. You can also have a transistor and ground it both sides. This is a good capacitor. If I connect gate to the source, I will make a diode out of it. Okay. I showed you earlier really diode connections. So I do not make any additional device in the ICs, I only convert my MOS technology areas into variety of component. What I cannot do then? Resistor I did, capacitor I did, diode I did, inductance. Inductance is nothing I can do about. All that I can do a print a spiral on the top of this okay. and that is very difficult game you know. I will show you some. It takes so much of area to make a small uh, inductance, nano, 0.1 nano Henry will still require some 20 turns or 18 turns, okay. And that area, if you see a RF circuit, 90 percent of RF circuit area is because of the inductances, okay. In analog chip, except for VCO where we will actually go to inductance, we will never use inductance anywhere, okay. Even in filters which we will do is possibly, I will replace L by something, okay. okay. By using switch capacitor, I will use LC as combination and every L I will replace as by C, okay. So I will never use inductances as far as possible in analog, okay. I will only use capacitors, I will use resistors also out of the same and I will use mass transistor and nothing more or nothing less, okay. That is how the integration is. Possible. So please do not think that I any, even if I show you this, essentially what I am going to do is the following. A P device properly biased, it acts like a resistor, okay. So I am not actually going to use any time a resistance anywhere, is that clear to you? So please take it that in real life, on a chip only mass transistors are preferred everywhere, convert as much as you can. Isko ground karo, isko ground karo, isko kholo, isko jebe karo, but that is all that I will give you, okay. So this has to be understood that in IC technology, the reason is size. 
w by l I want to see smaller, any other way I go it will be larger. So, I will, it will not be as good. So, what is the problem? The sheet resistance, I am sorry, the th TCF of this and TCF of this is different in sign, okay, and that is the problem starts. Then should we not really put a resistor to compensate? So that is what band gap reference people do. They actually put a resistance to compensate. Okay, they don't put MOS device or any other device to compensate. They actually use a resistor because it has the opposite sign of TCF. So you want to subtract. Okay. So please remember, different components have different way of looking at it in a given circuit. This is some additional examples I gave you. Okay, so, for the given n plus region coming back to where I was, TCF R is 1 upon R dr by dt which typically for n plus region is 2000 part per million per degree centigrade. TCF for threshold, I think this value you must be aware of those who have done second year course. It is change in threshold voltage with temperature is typically 2.4 millivolt per degree centigrade with a minus sign that is decreases in fact. So, for a typical 0.83 value of this TCF becomes roughly minus 3000 ppm per degree centigrade typical. As I say please remember in TCF 1 upon Vt is the value coming. So, for this value will be function of Vt itself which Vt you are using is that okay. What is TCF of Vt? 1 upon Vt delta Vt by delta T. So, 1 upon Vt has the value which you have to at different Vt this will be large. So, smaller Vt what will happen? TCF will be even larger is that clear? T minus larger. Okay. But this is around 0 0.8 volt Vt. This 3000 to 3500 is typically a ppm per degree centigrade is TCF. For a MOSFET how much is this in the bipolar Raj? That delta Vb by delta T there we calculate how much base emitter voltage changes with temperature 23 millivolt 2.3 millivolt per degree centigrade similar numbers not exactly same numbers. Okay. Amne thermal calculations kiye the. that is the way similar things are there. For a MOSFET beta dash is mu C ox. So, if I see mobility variation in this it can be written as beta dash 0 T by T 0 to the power minus 3 by 2. This is temperature dependence of mobility. This gives 1 upon beta dash delta B is roughly equal to minus uh, 1.5 by T where T here is in Kelvins. So, typically TCF for beta dash for the values which I used could be around 5000 part per million very large TCF for these device uh, beta dash. So, you have seen we, I, yesterday you were saying that beta dash has a very strong temperature dependence. Please remember this is for the Boyce Baker's books data based on that calculations have been done for different values you will have to figure out actual values there. So, do not say sir aapne bula aisa nahi hai ye ek typical values hai. Expression remains same data you substitute. Of course, 5000 will not become 25000 any day, it may become 5500, 4500, but it may not be 5000 for all cases we handle. Okay. okay, now we have seen sensitivity due to power supply and sensitivity due to this. So, now when I, when I am designing a current source, all these areas are in my mind how much current I want, how minimum voltage I want how much RO I want and how much is the sensitivity or uh, both for VDD and v uh, temperature I have. Based on that only my design will be a good current source, is that clear? Okay, here is another current source which slightly improves some of them, not necessarily all of them. We know the variation occurs, how do you get rid of variations in uh, normal circuits? Word is not I mean you are right word compensation, but what do we really do actually? Feedback, negative feedback stabilizes everything. Okay. So, one technique of improving this is to actually use negative feedback. That is what the negative feedbacks do. Okay. 
So, based on negative feedback and a simple current mirror, probably we can improve some of the sensitivity issues. And two such most popular current mirrors which are available, one is called Wilson mirror, the other is called regulated, regulated cascode. Okay. Both uses negative feedback in their circuits. Okay. Just now I said it and now here is that circuit. This R has been replaced by a P channel device. Now the question which you should ask, what is this V bias? Okay, this value you know that M1 must remain in saturation so that resistance is constant. So how do you fix V bias? So you need voltage reference which is in constant and actually used to connect there. Okay, I repeat what I say, I need a constant voltage source which I can connect here. Okay. So I will also see after the current source, I will also try to see what is voltage references available and how to constantly I will see their sensitivity with temperature in specific and value with the power supply variations. So if they are constant, I can connect them here, that value will push a fixed amount of resist uh, half of this and will flow a current of, of my choice through M1 and therefore M2. Is that okay? So, V bias as of now, I say it is constant. Okay. How do I get that constant is also in game. Okay. So, we will see, of course, there are another way of doing it. Instead of actually doing it, you can use a feedback also to keep V bias constant. So, we will use some tricks there also. So, we will take start circuit like that. Hmm? CFPM. So, initial start, so we will start karte hai. Usse fir wo feedback mein v fix kar feedback. And then it doesn't work itself. So we'll see that CFFP kya hai. That is another fun. Okay, here is Wilson mirror. What Wilson did over the cascode area? He did not change anything on the simple reference side. Okay. However, he has a cascode on the output side because RO you don't want to reduce. So okay, I kept this series like this. But what I did is the output of the first the stage or M2 drain, I connected to the gate of M4. Now let us see how it feedbacks. Please, have, I, have you drawn this figure? Rest you do not write, think only first here. Just draw the circuit and let us discuss first. Okay, so start looking. I right now assume because of my fixed bias, this current which need not be called IDS1, may be called I reference, which your book sometimes says is constant. Is that clear? IDS1 is a constant current generated because V bias is fixed by me okay, and no variations are, I have taken care of all of it as if this current is constant. Is that clear? Now let us say for some reason I0 increases. Okay. If you say this current increases, what will happen? That means this voltage drop will increase, which means this current will increase. If this current increases, what will increase? This current will increase because the mirror part of that. If this current increases and this is constant, this voltage must go down. Because you are pushing on the top and now you are asking it to increase. So, this voltage must go down. If this voltage goes down, VGS4 goes down. So, I0 reduces. Okay. If it goes too low, the opposite will occur. This will push till both sides match. So, this is what essentially negative feedback does. Is that clear? And since negative feedback allows you to stabilize, which is the standard way of stabilizing anything, you can use a partially cascoded mirror using Wilson current mirrors, uh, Wilson connections and say that it will be much better than normal cascode sources. Is that clear to you? You did not get it. IDS1 is constant, but by force you are trying to change IDS2. It is coming from mirror from M3 side. Iska VGS change kya to uska bhi VGS change ho jayega. Gate connected hai. What you are saying is, 
how can it happen? No, it will not. That is why feedback is how feedback will push that same current is what I am telling. Is that point clear to you? Your idea is in a circuit two currents cannot flow. That is exactly I am also saying. Is that clear to you? Because two currents cannot flow, but now I am forcing this to increase, which means this voltage must go down because IR drop will go down. So that this VGS falls. So this current will reduce then. Is that correct? Because we say IDS1 has to be IDS2. Is that clear? So how a feedback will force that issue that IDS1 only current can flow down even if there is a variation in I0 is what I said and therefore I0 will become constant independent of anything. This is called Wilson's feedback system. These are simple statements, nothing very great. Current mirror has I0 much stable than the simple mirrors. Output impedance is further improved because of the cascode connections. Okay. I already said for those I have made a statement the B bias is normally taken for the stable band gap reference okay, which we will look into. Okay. Can you think why there also it is a constant must be there also should be feedback because otherwise it cannot create a constant value. So a band gap reference must have some comparisons it must find errors and feed it back so that it reaches to a constant value. Okay. So, we will see that later. Is that okay everyone? This is VGS2, this is VGS3. Okay. Now, we see this is VGS4, this is VDS4, this is okay. what we said as far as the P channel device is concerned, it is only now acting like a current source with a resistance of RO1 and that is a constant current source because you say V bias is fixed. So, we do in AC we do not consider that, that is a fixed source, okay. but this RO1 will appear for that because there is the output resistance of that P channel device. Okay. So, as far as I am concerned for the first transistor only RO1 from drain to source is available, so I have plotted it here. Okay. For the D2 for this VGS2 by the way what I am calculating, I am calculating I am giving a Vx here and finding Vx by Ix to get R out, I am not doing anything, I already shown you here. I am trying to find R out from substituting, uh, putting a Vx source and finding Ix there. On the transistor D2 it is RO2 shunted by Gm2 Vgs2, but this D2 is gate of M4. Is that clear? Please check it. D2 or D1 is G4. Physically connect kya hai na? So this D1, D1, D2, G4 are same connections. D1, D2, G4 are same connections. Is that okay? This terminal, this terminal and this terminal are same. So this is that line. Okay, three, 3 of them D1, D2, G4. Now you see there is a Vg here coming here which is same as A voltage minus the source voltage of M4 is the Vgs4, is that correct? So the S of this transistor M4 and the voltage here subtraction is Vgs4. So this is my gate this is my source, the gap voltage drop between gate and source for 4 is VGS4. Sign please check it, this has to be plus because this is an n channel device. So, this is plus and this is minus for S4, is that okay? Is that okay? So, this VGS4, why I drawn this circuit is this, you should also see that the way I see a circuit, I can make an equivalent right there. And then I say, okay, the shunt hai wo niche upar kar denge. But basic idea is just to substitute whatever you are looking for making an equivalent. My suggestion to you is this method is always correct, okay, because you are only following node and from there whatever you are seeing you are substituting there. The S2 and S3 are same which are grounded, S2, S3 source of M2, M3 are connected and grounded, S2, S3 are connected and grounded. Okay. Now, I have to see drain of 4, this 
So, this is my where I am actually going to push the Vx Ix currents, uh, Vx force and Ix base, which is my I0 which I am looking for. For this transistor, what is the current source? Gm4 Vgs4 shunted by RO4. Just wait for this. If I say, and just now someone was asking if the source is uh, bulk is grounded between source and this there is a voltage now VSB, is that correct? However, the way VSB I can see VSB 4 is nothing but the signs I am putting plus minus for a source which is essentially equal to VGS 2 and VGS 3. VGS 1 where VGS 2, VGS 3 because they are connected with this is same as this potential. So, I say VSB 4 is nothing but VGS 2 or VGS 3, is that correct? So, this voltage, so this is my S3, this is my S4, this is VGS 2 which is equal to VSB 4 and since please remember this is VSB opposite polarity current pushes up GMB4, VSB4. Okay. Now, this is the equivalent for this. For M3, is GM term will appear there? Because this is a diode connection, so only RO3 parallel GM3, I kept it RO3, you can even neglect RO3 because GM3 will always larger than 1 upon RO. Therefore, that, but right now I kept it, I always say I let it because I do not know what currents you are going to use, so I want to retain them. In case they are comparable, make it parallel. Okay. Now, this is very big uh, circuit looking, but there is nothing big part in that. The first thing I calculate is VSB4. Okay. VSB4 is VGS2, same, put, same node, uh, VGS3. Now, look at the current which is passing through this. This drop is VSB4, is that correct? Drop across RO3 parallel GM3 and what is the current flowing? Some total of these 3, whatever current in this is essentially the net current. So, current coming out is also Ix, ek current hai, teen part mein divide hoa par niche aake phir sum ho gaya. So, ye sum current par yaha a gaya, idhar to khula hai, so no current. So, all this Ix current flow through RO3 parallel 1 upon GM3, is that current that is your VSB4. So, I get VSB4 is VGS2 equal to VGS3 is Ix times RO3 parallel this. Now, I want to calculate VGS4. How much is VGS4? If I know this voltage and if I know this voltage, is that point clear? How do I calculate VGS4? this voltage minus this voltage, is that correct? That is my VGS4. So, I write how much is this voltage? GM2 VGS2 parallel combination of RO1 and RO2, is that correct? So, this is my voltage here, is that should be clear? The voltage drop across parallel combination of RO1 RO2 is nothing but the voltage across this, that is VG4. How much is Vs4? The Vgs2, just now you wrote that. Okay. Please remember this voltage is this voltage. So, you subtract this. Is that clear? So, you get Vgs4 is minus Gm2 Vg this minus Vgs2 is your Vsb4. Okay. But what is Vgs4? Now, why I am interested in Vgs4? Because I want to find drop across because of this. So, I want this current source. Is that okay? Everyone, please write down. This circuit is, as I say, you can simplify circuit by parts and can directly write many things. Please do not write because this gives you a actual features what is happening there. Is that correct? Not only for this circuit, for any circuit, if you are more than one transistor on the top, please put three layers of them. Okay? And actually match the nodes correctly. Okay. That will never make any mistake in evaluations at the end. Okay. So,
So, this is I am not saying this is the method, but this is much simpler method of doing things. And I, I am saying this from my experience, but you, you can do much better, uh, you can simplify circuits much equivalent of the, what is the other method? For each stage find equivalent feminine source and feminine resistor replace there, keep doing that, that also is a equally good method. But in doing that essentially you are partly doing the same thing which I am doing, I am doing all together that is it, is that correct? So my method is no different from the other methods given in the books. It is same, I am only trying to see, visualize what this circuit is doing. So, I actually show you what is the equivalent of that from there. Please do not think it, this is the technique or something. Okay. Before we quit, let us finish this today. VSB 4 is the between the source because please remember there is a drop here which is the source voltage for D4, M4. Since substrate is grounded, there is a VSB 4. Is that correct? But I know this VSB 4 is same as because this is the same terminal source here must be same as this and this. SB 4 this is plus and this is ground. Is that sign correct? Source is at higher potential than the ground. Okay. So, that is the way that is why I said the way I have drawn I am only keeping signs accordingly. What will have and that is why actually I change this sign also upwards. Okay. Okay. Is that now clear to all? Okay. So VGS four is therefore equal to minus I take sign one plus GM two R one parallel into VGS. Just combine. Nothing. Nothing very serious. But VGS two is VSB four. I just wrote. So I replace VGS two by VSB four. But VSB4 I already calculate as Ix parallel uh, uh, multiplied by RO3 parallel 1 upon GM3. So I substitute that here. So I get VGS4 is equal to minus 1 plus GM2 RO1 parallel RO2 into Ix RO3 parallel 1 upon GM3. Is that okay? So one equation I figured out in which VGS4 is related to this. Okay. If you look at the circuit once again. Please write down, write down this, we will come back to circuit again. Only up to equation 1 you check and then I will draw the circuit. Okay. Is that okay? Everyone wrote down this equation? Okay. See the circuit, this Ix is divided into 3 currents, is that correct? Gm Vgs 4 minus Gmb Vsb 4 plus Vx divided by Vx minus Vgs2 or Vsb4 by R, R0. This voltage minus this voltage divided by R4, this current source and opposite current source, this is the net current which is Ix. Is that okay? Three parts, each is this Ix is sum total of these three okay. because you can see below Ix is coming. So, all three must be summed up proper signs. Okay. So, I summed it Gm4 Vgs4 minus Gmd Vs4 plus Vx minus Vgs2 is that correct? Vgs2 divided by RO4 is the second equation. Then I use this two equation and evaluate it. Vx by wherever this Vs, v, Vgs4 is there, I substitute all of it here, collected the terms for Ix, collected terms for Vx and then divided Vx by Ix. Okay, so, just check this is RO, so this is RO, I do not know which one, but just check some RO must appear there. Under Oga, okay. No, it is GM RO. Okay, again. So, yaha kuch aro hoga. Okay. okay, so check it. All that I say, I, what I did in the paper, I actually substituted v, VGS4 here, VSB4 in terms of Ix again, and then I collected Vx and Ix terms and divided. This is what I did. So, this is what I got. Chara ye last expression check kar lena. Okay, please check it. Sorry for my uh, mistake. 
I should do, but anyway, maybe tomorrow I will actually show you correct expression which I got. In normal cases, GM3 will be same as GM4 because I will keep M3, M4 identical, thresholds are same. RO3 parallel 1 upon GM3, I will replace it by 1 upon GM3 because I know ROs are larger, okay. And GM3 is equal to GM4, so I will say RO3 parallel 1 upon GM3 is 1 upon GM3 or 1 upon GM4, and I call them GM itself per se, okay. I can use that. I will also say RO1 is equal to RO2 equal to RO4, all these mirrors are same, so all ROs are 8. If I do all this at the end of the day, and let us say GM2 and GM4 are only one, these are this can be adjusted. We say roughly R out will come R O plus G M 2 R O square okay. or roughly G M 2 R O square. Okay. Cast code, so nothing great. All that I did after all these huge calculations, I arrived at saying that it is G M R O square. Okay. No great this, but just to say that the circuit is larger, things do not change very much. All that you have to keep evaluating expression wise longer expressions. Okay. So, do not get fear of that. Okay. So, obviously we knew it is a cascode and therefore, it has to boost RO. Now, VO minimum is the next thing we must want to know. Okay, Ma'am, you just write this final expression which is of relevance to you. You can do whatever you lay. R out is RO plus GM2 RO square by cast code the output impedance has boosted gain times RO, okay. GM RO is again, so times RO that is the boosting of that. Further boosting how can we do? You can use cast code with a gain, okay. so you can further boost RO in case you need further R out higher, some other penalty of power and area you may give. Okay. Okay, what is VO minimum? VD4. Okay. At the end, I, what I wrote is otherwise also true. So, I, I did not bother to see up. I said it should be RO plus GM RO square, okay, equivalently. If you see this figure, this voltage is this voltage plus VGS. I repeat, this is VGS, you have come here plus VDS. Is that correct? I repeat again, this voltage is same as you reach here, this plus Vds of this is the Vd4, is that okay? So, Vgs3 plus Vds4 is the output voltage V0. So, Vo is Vgs3 plus Vd sat, Vds4 sat, the transistor must remain in saturation. So, we say it is, what is the age of saturation minimum ke liye? Vgs minus Vt. So, you substitute VGS4 minus VT4. I can rewrite now VGS. How do I write VGS in what terms? VT plus under root 2i by beta plus have you written down this? Okay. So, we write your minimum is under root 2i0 by beta 3 plus VT3 plus 2i0 by VT cancel kar diya minute. If beta are also equal, which you can, then a 2 or agya bahar, 2 into 2 i 0 beta dash w by l plus v t. So, now v o minimum is proportional to 2 i 0, under root of 2 i 0. So, larger the current source you are getting, by definition or by theory, your v o min will increase. Is that clear? This is not, you cannot do much. Essentially, I am saying even if slopes VO minimum whatever you are getting, if this is your this, if you want higher currents, you will have to, sorry, here, you will have to do only this. There is no other way of pushing higher currents. If you push higher currents, drops will also increase. Essentially, what I am saying, Ohm's law hai, current bar gaya to drop bar jata hai. There is nothing I can do. Only thing is, it is not linear like Ohm's law, it is under root of I0, which is it proportional to, okay. Because of the square law term I am getting, okay. So, I can evaluate my VO min. How do I minimize this? I cannot change I0 because that is what I am looking for. 
all that I adjust is W by L's. Okay. But if I adjust W by L, what will happen? The mirror current and reference current may not be same. So, I will have to figure out what reference I should keep so that with this W by L I get the I0 of my choice. Okay. That you can always think. Is that clear? Because the ratio may not be same then, then it will transfer in a ratio. So, initial current must be boosted to come to this value if W by L is changed on the other side. Okay. Figure it out what should be reference current. That is how you will be able to define specifically this. Okay. We will come next time uh, what is we call Vt reference current source.